In this video we are going to do peach style nails, coffin and stiletto shape. I will show you how to do 3D peaches with acrylic and share a story time, how a client refused to pay. Coming up! Hello guys, Anastasia here. This is my client's hand, it's pretty standard, nothing unusual here, and we start with the prep. In this video I decided to do a story time as I receive requests from you from time to time and since I'm in the nail industry since 2004 I have quite a bunch of stories to share. Let's begin. This one happened a while ago, I didn't have much experience yet, probably less than one year, I was working from home. I was always booking appointments with my clients at even numbers, you know, like 12, 2 p.m., 4 p.m., 6 p.m., and so on. A new client booked an appointment with me at noon, and when the time comes, she's not there. I called her a few times, but she didn't pick up the phone, and since this is the new client, I assumed that this is a no-show appointment, which happens from time to time, especially with the new clients. So I thought, well, it's not a big deal, I will have just an extra break, and I was just doing something, and then, at 1 p.m., she shows up at my door. I said, um, actually, we had an appointment at 12 p.m., so you're one hour later. And she said, no, I booked at 1 p.m. I said, well, maybe there was some misunderstanding, but unfortunately, I have another client coming up in just one hour, so we do not have enough time to do an extensions. But I have an opening tomorrow, maybe you would like to come tomorrow? And she said, no, I have a very special evening tonight and I need nails. I offered to do an overlay, but she said, no, I definitely need a long nails. It was a while ago, so unfortunately we didn't have such thing as gel tips. If only I had soft gel extensions back then, it would be a lifesaver, but I didn't. All we had was just regular tips. So she said, maybe you can just attach tips to my nails and then use a nail polish and that will be fine. I said, well, yeah, it's an option, but it will be definitely something just for one evening. So if you desperately need nails for one evening, that will probably work. Let's do it and then you will come back tomorrow and we will finish the extensions. Meanwhile, I'm doing the prep, so I did some dry manicure prep, then I take off the surface shine with 180 grit buffer to prep the nails for extensions. And that's exactly what I did with that client as well. We just attached tips and then I used a regular nail polish and applied it on top. For some reason, she was very satisfied and happy with the result. She even paid me $5 and went away. I applied dehydrator and acid primer, then I'm going to let dry and we're going to do acrylic sculptured nails. But back in those days I was using mostly tips. So even though we booked an appointment, she didn't show up the next day and she didn't pick up the phone. And the next day she also never called me back, so I assumed maybe she changed her mind. Maybe her nails got broken too fast, I don't know. So she never came back and I even forgot about this story already. And then, I think about 10 days later, she calls me again. And she's like, hey Anastasia, three nails got broken. I was so surprised that they lasted somehow for this long. I was like, wow, honestly, I am surprised that only three nails got broken since then. She said, I would like to come back to you and fix them. I said, well, we probably need to do a new extensions anyway, but if some of the tips are still on, maybe we can keep them. So I booked an appointment with her two days after that, because I didn't have any opening the same day or the next day. So she comes in two days and there are no product, no tips on her nails, which was predictable. And she said, well, because you didn't book an appointment with me the same day when I called you, that's why none of them are left now. And I just repeated myself, well, yeah, those were just tips on the free edge, so they're really not supposed to stay for that long. I'm actually surprised they lasted somehow. 
So we did a new extensions, a new set from scratch on tips. I believe it was an ombre or something like that with a little bit of design. It was obvious that she liked her extensions, she was smiling, she seemed satisfied with my work. And then when a time comes to pay, she says, Anastasia, I looked through your website and it says that you have a guarantee 10 days for extensions. So we did these nails 10 days ago and it's not my problem that you didn't have an appointment the same day that I called you. So it's been maybe a little more than 10 days. But anyways, you did extensions and all the nails broke. So now you need to fix them for free. So I'm not going to pay. I was so shocked. I never been in such situation. I started doing nails when I was only 16. So obviously I didn't have any experience like that and I just didn't know what to respond. But I said, well, you've seen it. We did a whole new set from scratch. And when we did these tips for the first time, I warned you that these were not real extensions. They were something like temporary nails just for your evening. Then all of a sudden she says that she doesn't like them. She just doesn't like these nails. And I was trying to ask, like, what exactly? What is that that you don't like? Because I can fix that. Is that shape, color, design, something else? But she didn't say anything in particular. She just said that she hates them. I was so stressed at the moment, but I remained calm. You know, that's just the type of my personality. I usually remain calm in any kind of weird and awkward situations. And then she says, okay, I'm going to pay you $10. I don't really remember how much I charged back then, but that was definitely way more than that, probably 40 or 50 dollars. Oh, I actually remember the intonations she used when she said that. She said something like, will 10 dollars be enough for you? I felt lost because it was something like I was taking her money away from her or stealing her money, even though basically I just did my job and I deserve to get some money for it, right? So I just said, okay, I do not need $10 or anything else. Let's just do it this way. You will go, but I'm not going to book a new appointment with you. And she said, okay. And then she just left. Even though I didn't get paid for doing my job, basically, I felt relieved when she left because I realized that if she will just keep coming back, that will be definitely another stress because she just been at my house two times and it was so stressful for me both times. And I would rather have less clients even though I needed them very much back then. I'd rather just say no rather than have this stress over and over again. This is the lesson that I learned. Luckily, after that, I didn't have much clients who did something like that. At least they didn't refuse to pay. Let me know if you are a nail technician or maybe at some other jobs. Did you have a similar situations and what did you do? Because I'm pretty sure that if it would happen to me now, I think I will act differently. But that was many years ago. And even though I didn't have any experience, I still think I probably did the right thing. I mean, I didn't provoke any scandal. I didn't continue arguing with her because I just felt that it will be pointless. That will be just a waste of my time and most importantly, my energy that I definitely did not feel like. And she never called back. She never returned. I guess she learned her lesson as well. Meanwhile, I'm continuing doing nails. So I did one ombre nail and this nail will be clear. So I did a clear foundation. Then I add some nude and some peach color as well as a little glitter. And then I'm going to encapsulate it with clear. And by the way, this is going to be my first acrylic set with different shape. I've seen it a few times on Instagram. Coffee nails and pinky is stiletto shape. So I will be trying this one for the first time. Taking off the form and then we need to do filing and shaping. We decided to do matte nails, especially ombre. I think it looks really nice when it's matte. 
and the glass nail should be definitely a glossy top coat. So we have ombre on two nails, thumb and pinky, which is stiletto. This nail is just a nude color because we are going to do peaches design on it. Getting back to that situation with the client, I can clearly remember my emotions back then. For some reason, I was blaming myself for quite a while. I just thought maybe I should have texted her instead of called her, maybe she misheard me and that's why she thought that appointment was for 1 p.m. instead of 12 p.m. and, you know, many other things. Maybe I should have called her more and so on. But now, honestly, I do not think that it was my fault. Even though there is a saying in marketing like client is always right, sometimes I think there might be exceptions. After shaping, I always buff the nails because I just love this smooth buffed surface. I'm using the 180 grit buffer. Then we usually wash the hands and it is time to seal the nails. I'm using matte top coat and glossy top coat for the glass nail. Let's do Peach's design. I'm going to use the same orange color I used for the ombre. This is by Savilland. And peaches are basically like hearts. So you need to do a heart shape, then you wait until it's matte. And with a thin brush, I basically divide it into two pieces but not just like a straight line, do a little curve. When I was doing this design, I was a little worried that they are going to look not like peaches, but more like butts. But you know what? I bought an actual peaches just to look at them and realize they do look like butts. I believe they are even used as an emoji when you're describing some exercises for glutes, right? Since the product I'm using is pretty slow setting, I can just put a few drops of acrylic beads, then wait a while and then use this line. So you don't really need to press or something, just with the very tip of the brush, you just divide them into two. It is very important to use a small brush and the edge should be very sharp because if it's not, then it will be quite hard to do such a thin line. You can also use some other tool for it, such as dotting tool, but dotting tool will just create a line, it will not really push the product a little bit. I'm using a dark green gel polish just to slightly outline these lines, and then I realized there's one thing missing that will definitely make them look like peaches. This is a tiny leaf on top and I used the green color so right now I think they definitely look like peaches because before that I was not completely sure. We also decided to decorate some nails with Swarovski rhinestones. They always do everything shinier and better. Cure in LED and we're done. I'm very happy with the set. I think it looks very beautiful and stylish. What do you guys think? And also, I would like to hear your thoughts on this kind of video. How about story time? Should I continue doing this because I have more stories to share? Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here on my channel, consider subscribing as I post new nail art tutorials just like this one every week. See you in my next one. Goodbye!